have in front of me, we have the the main player in Metronome, and we have a person that sort of bookends Metronome in a way, but is there in spirit, is it there in stress? A lot of the choices, decisions that your character makes is informed by a very deep personal connection to this figure. So it sounds like you're not, you might physically not be there, but you're very much a center of attention. So congratulations on this film. Um, I was at the Q&A yesterday, so I was really happy to see you guys uh, live there. Um, so before we plunge into the metrics of the film, when you guys were cast, how was your individual casting processes like? Was, was uh, I believe that your director's name is Alex? Yes. yes. So did he have a criteria, a physical criteria of how he wanted you guys to look? When you're in that, when he's in that casting bubble, did he sort of want to see the synergy between you two? I imagine maybe he had different people potentially pairings. So did he have the opportunity to like put you guys together and see how that might work out? Go on. Oh. Well, about casting process, so about the question with uh, Alexandru, with Alex. With the criteria. Uh, yeah, he told us he was searching actually for 70s faces, I don't know what that means. He thought um, the face and the bone structure and the face structure of the people then are is different than for the people now. Yeah. And he told us we, we fit the criteria and every other cast member from, uh, from our group of friends in the movie. And about our chemistry, I think he was just lucky because we got casted very, very short before shooting and uh, we clicked with each other, but uh, didn't it's really have time to make a lot of compatibility auditions or okay. something like that. It was okay. just one pair, us. Okay, okay, okay. So when I was first investigating the film, I'm a film nerd, I tried to find out <laughs> the most information without getting any spoilers before going to see the film in Cannes. I said, I get a sense that I know you, Mara, from somewhere, which is not the case, but you are, you have a sibling that's established in the, the industry. Was it something that your family sort of instilled in you, like the idea of performance or the, the performing arts? Is it something that, that you sort of like learned through your sisters? I imagine a couple of years older than you, but she could be your twin. I mean, you guys really look <laughs> yeah. so close in proximity. Yeah, really look alike. So. Yeah. Uh, I started playing very, Randomly, actually, when I was 10 years old, okay. I got casted uh, as a main character in a theater play in my hometown in Romania, okay. in uh, Timisoara at the German theater. Okay. And uh, yeah, I started playing with 10 years old. Then I just started collaborating with uh, with the theater there. And my sister actually shot her first movie when she was in high school, I think. Then I moved to Bucharest. Then I started. I started in metronome, like in my first year at the, at the school, and uh, yeah, our parents didn't really do anything a lot with, they don't do film or theater or anything, my mom is a psychologist and my dad is a physician, okay. so they're very human oriented people, yeah. and they've, they've shown us a lot of cultural stuff when we grew up, we went to museums, we went to the cinema, we went to the theater, and I think that sort of stuck with us. The, at, up. at the Q&A, um, so I'm watching this film and I'm thinking, okay, these young players, they're not even close to being born at the juncture of this film industry. I'm thinking, oh, maybe it might have been the case for your parents as well. The parents might have seen the end of the, I, I forget how to pronounce his name, Ceausescu? Ceausescu. Ceausescu era. <laughs> so it would have maybe been, re I was thinking, maybe there's remnants of that psychological burden that there exists. Is, yeah. uh, maybe outside of Bucharest it exists more. What is your rapport as young players not having experienced that era or that mentality or that heaviness or the, the government control? But do you have do you have a sort of like tangible rapport with maybe experiences that your parents' friends have lived through or or just like what your understanding is of that era. Do you have a tangible connection totally. to that? Totally, yeah. In we what can way? Still feel. 
Oh, we have a lot of reminiscence of the communist regime in our mentality as Romanian peoples. And I think it was such a big collective trauma for everyone, including our parents and our grandparents and our grand-grandparents. Yeah. <laughs> so um, it's, gener it's generational, you know, we can't really outrun it because it, it ended in 89 and we were born in 2000, so 10 2000, years later yeah. to say, but in 10 years, pe uh, people and things don't really change that much. And there are a lot of uh, characteristic of the communist uh, mentality that stuck with us. And there's also, I mean, I was looking at Vlad and all the different operators, physically how they look. I was thinking of the locations, like it's Alex chose some really key locations for the film. Even the frame, uh, not the frame rate, but the the aspect ratio. Mm -hmm. Everything feels like it's an enclosed space, mm -hmm. and the idea of suppression. It matches well with those, uh, the location, also the visual aspect of it. When you're filming the party sequence, when you're filming intimacy scenes in really enclosed bedroom spaces, did, did you feel as if uh, it was a little bit heavy lifting just as a performer? Did you feel as if, like, like I, God, I need a cigarette after this scene because because it's just too much to, to take on? Did you did you get a sense of that? Do you want to answer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Work, you know? Cause it's really for the face. for the first scene, it wasn't that really hard yes. because we talked so much before. Uh, you, about you mean the intimacy scenes? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, after the second one, of course, it was really, really hard and exhausting because we were overtiming already, and uh, we had a, a really, really hard conversation—a four-hours conversation before starting shooting the second one. Uh, we did it in one hour or something like that, like six takes or something like that, or, or eight. Yeah. But after that we were exhausted. We have to leave and uh, the day after we had, uh, had our last shooting day. And the camera was very close in yeah. general. Like for me, shooting every day, 12 hours a day, um, with the camera being here. Major, Honestly, major like your sense of claustrophobia. Of course it did, yeah. and it it's very hard because you you have to to um, to act with the camera, but not be with your mind on the fact that the camera is right here next to you. But it's sort of you have to detach yourself. It's you have to play different things. It's very it's very weird for me. But I was lucky with Tudor. With, uh, with the DOP of the movie, who is amazing and he's very young and he's very open-minded and he understood the fact that it's very hard for me that he's here all the time. Yeah, and he showed us on an app what yeah, yeah, he yeah. is going to shoot and how is What's he going to shoot. As a, as a counterpoint for that cinematographer I discovered on the Quasette is with Munju's film it's much more open-ended, you know, yeah. there's a lot more pieces. Um, He's very talented. Yeah, yeah. He's amazing. Shout out there, to, to the... I, I was really queuing into your performance the f with the the first time your character is introduced to uh, to Vlad. Yes. Um, we only get I want to say ten percent of of you because the camera is on Vlad's character. Yes. Um, how is it performing in that sequence? Because there are there are different scales in your performance there when the camera is like focus mostly on Vlad. How is it working in that sequence? I want to say it's about a seven minute take, but how is it performing for the camera when the camera is not really in front of you? Did you find, uh, were, you, were you skewed in more into how Vlad, what was Vlad was giving you in order to like, to, to go up that scale of like, uh, fright and repression and how's that sequence for you? Hard. It was at the at the middle of the shooting time, at the okay. shooting period, and it was at some point where I wasn't really conscious about the camera anymore. Okay. I was really into my character and making Anna as strong as possible, and I knew that in the Securitat the um, storyline, so to say, it's very important that Anna comes out as strong and sort of. A victim of the oppression she's uh, exposed to, but especially that uh, that sequence, I was first of all very nervous about playing with Vlad, big Romanian actor. Yeah. So I was a bit nervous. Yeah, he's the an institution to Romanian cinema, Exa but also exactly. he plays yeah. the most famous Romanian villains, you know. 
and uh, it was at night time, so we started shooting at, at, at like two, I think, in the morning. Wow. And we're just on two on two chairs, me and Vlad on a on a corridor, like f uh, face to face. And Alex was like, "Okay, let's go in. We're ready for you." And rehearse it one time. And they just went through my head with all the horrible stories I can remember from the communist regime or any oppressive regime actually for of my personal traumas that I can sort of link to the story mm -hmm. of Anna. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I, I didn't really care if the camera was on me or not, or not because I wanted to help Vlad as well. Yeah. And we had like different perspectives of, of that sequence. So I got to be in front of the camera he got to be in front of the camera and uh, yeah it was it was very hard it was very hard like I was shaking with all my all my being and I wasn't allowed to cry because we didn't want to make Anna cry in that yes, sequence yes, yes. we didn't want to make her a big cry baby that goes in front of the police and starts crying you know so I finished the sequence each time went outside smoked a cigarette started crying went back inside and just did it all over again. The long take allows for you to access different uh, access Nuances. points. Nuances. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, it's not only fear that you're working with, you're working with so many different degrees. And that's what that's what the long take affords your performance is that you can be sitting down and Second. staring off in the distance, but you're going through so many different psychological things. Um, um, during the q and I think I understood correctly is that you guys were not given the full, completed, long-range idea of what the character is going to do next, right? We had a red line of the story. Okay. We knew Anna had to go there, be there, meet this person, okay. but especially the dialogue yeah. and how the meeting was going to, yeah. to be, that we didn't know. Only with Vlad we knew. That's fascinating. Not too many w films work that way. Yeah, it's very, it's very risky, actually. So for first time actors, what, a, how, how does, first of all, you're probably, you want to do the best job possible. How is it going in with, without a parachute? I mean, that, that's, that's what that is. With Sorin, it was more flexible. Like okay. Alex told me the A point and the B point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And because I was shooting uh, not so regularly, yeah. it was more of a impro when I got to the shoot, when I first started shooting there. Which is liberating in the same way too. Yeah, 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 of course, yeah, of course. I enjoyed uh, working like that with Alex, uh, receiving the text on uh, 15 minutes before shooting or something like that. It was. It was a risk, but I think uh, it worked out well, right? It worked well. <laughs> but it's, it's the fact that Alex did only documentaries up to Metronome. Yes. It was his first fiction Fitch movie. Fiction. So he worked very much like a documentary maker with us. He, he got a be. lot of stuff for the movie from us as people. As people, actually. yeah. Yeah, there was a real implication and from your part on a creative level, which I yeah. found it's it's always nice to hear that 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 he entrusts in you know young players um, and I, I was just thinking about the dance the dance sequences yeah. just how there's even a complexity there you know of, of what the character's thinking and, and emotionally going through I mean there is an arc to your uh, to what's happening emotionally to the character um, so I, I thought that was quite interesting I think I think I could tie that to his docu aestheticism or fly on the wall, mm -hmm. trying to capture a moment mm -hmm. within a moment within a moment. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, you can see that I think mostly at the party sequence when Anna goes a bit further away from her, from her group. Yeah. And she just awkwardly tries to dance. Yeah. But she can't really make it because she's very, very sad. Yeah, that was. Uh, that was tiring a bit, I think, during the whole shooting time, because if it happens in only one day, the movie, but you shot it in like 20, 20. Yeah, yeah. and you sort of have to have the arch very, very well figured out and to not depart from it, because maybe one day I was a bit jolly and happy, yeah. and I was like, why can't Anna just have fun in this sequence? And then I was like, no, she's very upset. Okay, let's go. <laughs> it's, it's a, it really is a film that, that has fun with the catch-22. It's like every every choice that you have has a consequence. You guys are all in an age group where you are remnants of that specific moment. Did you guys do research into trying to find out 
the emotional state of these players. I mean, there's no there's no documentary film on how it was to be that age at that moment. It does not exist. The people that lived it, it's it's removed, and maybe they don't even want to. Maybe they don't have access to that. So how did you sort of like think creatively about the the emotional IQs of these characters and and sort of like all the implications and everything that they had lived through. How did you access that? Did you do any kind of research? It's very hard to not work with conclusions, first of all, because we know what happened afterwards, but they didn't. And that's something you have to keep in mind, to not be a that's projection a really good point. That's a really good point. of us living in democracy and just picturing some communist people very far away from us that we don't really identify with. So I think the process I went through was just trying to understand what was proper to that regime. Yeah. What meant oppression? Okay, starting from that point. How much of this oppression can Anna experience? Why then? Why, why 72? Because censorship started in the cultural areas of Romania. So I try to understand first of all if she is ever truly free. And that I tried to talk with Alex a lot. And we sort of got to the conclusion that maybe a bit with uh, Sorin and a bit with her father. But otherwise, even if she's alone, maybe mostly when she's alone, she puts this, this horrible pressure of not getting anything wrong because now she knows which, what, what are the consequences, mm -hmm. you know? So I try to understand the, the difference of what liberty means and how the lack of it impacts an individual. Well, well, well said, well said. Um, so this is like, to me, this is a major and new work in Romanian cinema. There's a lot of interesting, a lot of people mention the Romanian new wave, the onset of the decade. Um, and there's a whole bunch of new creative directions that Romanian cinema is going in. I think this is a fresh perspective of what, how we can discuss that oppressive past, but also how we can give it a new vocabulary. Mm -hmm. And so I was curious about you as, as artists, like, what are you curious about exploring on your own personal professional paths? What, what is the, like, when you go back from the Red Sea Film Festival, like, what is your reality? I imagine you both live in Bucharest. Yeah. yeah. So what, 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 what is, what is, like, you guys living in Bucharest now, what does that look like? What, uh, like, how do you engage with art? How do you engage with cinema? Um, and especially all these new voices, there's a, there's, like, I, like you were mentioning, the DP did some really great work on yes. these two films. So there's like a new faction of filmmakers that are influenced by, you know, Manju and and the, the producer Puyo. here, Christy Puyo, yeah. and Puyo as well. Like, like, how does it feel to be part of like part of that new look into to yeah, uh, national cinema? Do you want to answer that? That makes sense. This is too large. This is too broad. Large of a question. Yeah. It's, first of all, it's going to be a weather check when we, because it's, uh, in Romania it's 30 less degrees than here. But after that, we, I am really focusing on my uh, bachelor degree uh, that I have this year on my uh, my project with the class, okay. the play okay. that we are going to rehearse when I go back. And yeah, and. We are really proud of us, of us, of our team that we had for Metronome and the fact that we we are friends now and we call each other and text each other and it's not like a regular production uh, team uh, kind of relationship. I mean, we see each other with Alex, with, uh, with Tudor as well, with Vlad as well. Yeah, it's very... Very friendly now. Yeah. So it's You're very. You're still based in Bucharest. As yeah, well? I'm still okay. I'm still based in Bucharest at the moment. We'll see what happens next. Um, yeah, we are in the same industry, but our career paths sort of dist are distance from each other. I don't know why. Like we can feel at this point already that we're not really competing with one another, and I really hope that doesn't happen ever. But one day you're gonna start together in a film. Some, uh, some yeah, everybody, everybody to to told us this, yes. and we will be very picky with <laughs> because they don't get us like right away. The, the package deal is not. Uh, yeah. It's not easy, easy thing. Yeah. 
So yeah, right at the moment, what am I gonna do? It's um, I'm very happy that projects get shot right now in Romania, and we get a little more connections with the outside, with the European yeah, industry. Yeah, productions in France. Exactly, with, with Netflix. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. So I'm doing this series with uh, that was co-produced by Netflix. I'm gonna shoot it next year, and like two movies. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and uh, I finished school already. I'm actually doing theater school right at the moment, uh, directing school. Uh, okay. okay. Yeah, and uh, I will do um, a show when we, I get back in Romania. Okay. Yeah, and just rehearse for the movies and do them in parallel and send some self tapes. <laughs> in the outside world and we'll see what yeah. happens you know yeah great well uh, listen thank you so much for coming down to the red sea film festival i think we both escaped our perspective winters on some level so we're doing <laughs> yes. it for some a whole other reasons yeah. but uh, it was really nice to be able to talk with the uh, talk with you about this film because alex left Cannes really quickly <laughs> after premiering the film i think he was there for three days and then he was gone yeah he wasn't even there to accept the best director prize of the so yeah two there was yeah, Tudor was there and he went on stage. Uh, but uh, yeah, so it's just uh, fun to interact and, uh, and uh, get to speak to this film. And I'll be watching out for you guys on the big screen, whatever series Thank you guys you. are on. Uh, so, uh, multi mask for your time. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hey, this is Eric from MyOnCinema.com. If you want to support us, subscribe below. For more reviews, interviews, film festival coverage from Sundance, Cannes, Toronto, you want to check out these guys on this side.